Before we get started with today's video, I have an announcement to make. After years of telling other people's stories, I finally released one of my own. My novel Eternal Rain is available now in both ebook and paperback format for those of you who are like me and prefer to collect physical media. You can grab a copy right now on Amazon through the link in the description of this video. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. Alice, after using her extensive detective skills, realizes something that no one learned before that Garlemald is really, really cold. So cold, in fact, that any survivors who are wandering around outside of shelter for too long would be on a one way trip to the upper room. So it'll be for the best if you all get your hunt on the way as soon as possible. Amanda Lane, one of the most useless people in the contingent, thinks that he knows the perfect spot to start searching, and since he does carry around a telescope, Alice decides to humor him. He does manage to catch sight of a Garland girl that's running away from something. The good news is running across snow leaves a lot of footprints, so after grabbing a few warming potions from the Ellison who is seriously trying to undo his status as useless, the Warrior of Light and the twins head off after the fleeing woman. When you catch up to the Garlean, she is not even remotely interested in talking to Eorzeans. She blames your people for the current state of Garlemald, and no matter how much Alice tries to convince her that none of your people had anything to do with their current predicament, since none of you are even sure what happened in the first place, she still doesn't trust you. She does finally tell you all her name once you mention the Talaferoi and their tempered troops. She's Licinia, and she honestly has no idea how she didn't end up tempered like most of the other people. She remembers hearing a loud roar, a lot of screaming, then everything got eerily quiet. She had thought the fighting had stopped so she stepped outside where she saw hundreds of people just staring at the sky like mindless drones. Others had gone insane and started fighting the soldiers. She didn't want to get caught up in all of that so she ran away. The place she's been staying in with a few others who didn't get their minds taken over is called Victor Spoils and it used to be a mansion for retired soldiers. Now it's being used as a safe house. Unfortunately, their supplies are running out. Lucky for her, the Ilzebar contingent does really plan on helping, so she goes to let the others know that they may not end up starving to death after all. There aren't many of them, but even though they're desperate and starving, they aren't willing to let strange foreigners inside of their home, so if you want to help out, you'll have to do it outside. The twins are okay with that, but it's still pretty clear regardless of what you do, Lucinia still doesn't trust you. Most of the refugees are pretty sick, which makes it hard for them to travel to a warmer location, so Lucinia wants you to try to get them back healthy. Alphano gets to work on that while the Warrior of Light passes out those warming potions that Amanalan gave to you. While you're doing that, you see a radio sitting on the table that is constantly playing Garlemald's national anthem. Usually the people use them to listen to the messages that are being sent out across the Empire, but since the capital fell, all that's been playing over and over again is the music. The song was made to remember the soldiers who died trying to retake Locusa Monas, the homeland that the Garleans had been forced out of generations ago. And it was meant to remind the people that no matter how hard things got, they would eventually get better. Some of the refugees think that the song is Varys' way of telling his people that he's still alive. They think he faked his murder because he knew things were about to get bad in the nation and he needed to leave to find a way to save his people. I guess people will make up all kinds of nonsense to give themselves hope because that theory is very thin. Lucinia had figured out that you're a part of the group staying in Camp Broken Glass, and the people that you fought must be Virgilius troops since she had seen them marching in your direction a few days ago. She didn't know how you and your soldiers entered the nation, but when she finds out that you flew in on airships, she starts to get an idea. You don't get to hear about it because someone inside of the building who she's clearly trying to hide from the foreigner starts to talk. The Garlean woman pretends like the sound was just an animal that may have wandered into the building, then starts to ramble on about how the wild beasts have been attacking the people since the soldiers are off doing who knows what. The monsters make wandering around dangerous for the non-fighting folks, but since you're clearly a capable warrior, she figures it won't be hard for you to travel to the Tappers near the frozen lake. Tappers are people who gather Ceruleum which powers all of the Garlean equipment, including the heaters. Lucinia tried to get them to share their fuel, but they won't trade it for anything other than food, which her group doesn't have any to spare. Her group only needs enough of it to last until they're healthy enough to go to your camp, so you agree to go and see if you can convince the tappers to share a little bit of their fuel. The tappers are violently against the idea of talking to you at first, so you're forced to knock a bit of sense into their guards. After that, Alice shows up. Lucinia had told her to come with you just in case you needed some backup, which is unlikely but it's not like an extra pair of hands aren't useful, so the two of you go to have a chat with the leader of these tappers, a Rothgar named Jarek. The idea of Eorzeans coming to save Garleans is stupid to him since it seems like a perfect opportunity to wipe them out. None of the tappers are actually Garleans, they were all taken from their homelands and either forced to mine Ceruleum or tricked into it under the guise of earning a better life. 
Needless to say, they're not exactly loyal subjects of the Empire. Regardless, they're not going to tell you the secrets of mining Cerulean from the frozen lakes because a smart businessman never tells how he does what he does. They have more than enough of the stuff to run their heaters, but since they can't eat it, they need to find someone who's willing to trade it for food, which considering how the Ilzebar contingent brought plenty, they may be in luck. Either way, it's not like they can go home. Even if they somehow made it out of Garlemald, the only skill they have is mining Ceruleum, so they are well and truly stuck no matter what happens to the Empire. Jarek is surprised that the pure-blood Garleans were willing to ask foreigners for help, but since Lucinia has a little sister, likely the person she was trying to hide from you, that makes sense. And since he's not totally heartless, Jarek is willing to give the two of you a bottle of fuel, so you take it and head back to Lucinia to try and find out why she felt the need to hide her sister from you. And that's where we're going to stop for the day. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, comment, share it, and subscribe. Donate to the channel if you can, and I'll see you all next time.